Sleeping. It's the best. Except when you're camping. Then it's the worst. That's why I always sleep in my car. But I just bought an SUV that doesn't have fold flat seats in the rear, so I'm gonna build a camper conversion. I'm gonna build a cheap and fast camper conversion though, because I have a camping trip this weekend that I'm not at all prepared for. So I'm gonna try to do this for about 40 bucks and I'm gonna try to have it done in a little over an hour. If you have Instagram, you've probably noticed it's a thing now to spend like $30,000 converting a van into a camper. I don't want to do that. I want to spend 40 bucks to convert my SUV into the simplest possible camper. I've done a more complicated camper conversion in the past, and it was pretty sweet. But I have a camping trip this weekend, so I'm going to get 80% of the way there with 20% of the work. To do this, I'm going to build a flat rectangular platform to sleep on and to cook on, and I'm going to leave some space underneath it to store stuff. This is really all a camper conversion is. A flat surface for sleeping, cooking, and cleaning, and a place to put everything. I see a lot of camper conversions with drawers and slide out tables and a bar for some reason. And these things are cool, but unnecessarily complicated for what I'm trying to do today. Storage is important. Everything needs a place and most of it needs to be easily accessible. I'm a big fan of duffel bags and backpacks. They have all sorts of pockets and straps and you probably have a couple extra already. And when you're done camping, you don't have to fish through drawers for dirty dishes or dirty laundry. You just grab a bag and go inside. It's way easier. I recommend getting a mattress that's easily movable, like one of these trifold mattresses. When you need a surface to cook or clean on, just fold the bottom third out of the way. Bam. Kitchen. There are four steps to this. We need to measure, including the length, the width, and the height of the platform. Once we know the measurements, we can cut the plywood to the right size. Then we build a platform structure to support the plywood. And finally, we add the legs to get it level. I'm going to split this into two pieces, a front and a rear, so it's easier to get in and out of the car. What stuff do we need? Well, we need a clean work surface. We'll need three 2x4s. I bought four. I don't know why. Whatever. We'll need a 4x8 sheet of plywood. I got the nice sanded kind, which I definitely recommend over the cheaper plywood. It's going to make this whole thing a lot nicer for like 10 bucks. We'll need a drill, a drill bit, some screws, a bit driver for the screws, a level, some safety glasses, a saw of some sort, tape measure, probably want a carpenter square. Measurements. The first measurements are easy. Length is from the back of the front to the front of the back of the car. So that's the back of the front to the front of the back. Whatever. It's the length of the back of the car. Be sure to push your front seats all the way forward. Width is between the shock towers or wheel wells or whatever is behind these big plastic things. Basically, you want to measure out the largest rectangle that can fit in the back of your car. The leg length measurements are a little more involved, but not too much. Get something about six feet long and straight, like, you know, a two by four. Prop up the front and the rear to the height that you want it and make sure it's level. I'm just going to rest the front of my platform on the front edge of the seat, so I'll leave that 2x4 there. That height measurement is going to be zero. We'll also have legs at the back and the middle, so measure those heights as well. You're going to want to make sure you're parked on level ground while you're doing this. If you're not, your measurements are probably going to be off. Eh, close enough. I'm going to do something a little bit different with the front half of this platform. Instead of building a frame to support it, I'm just going to support it in three places. The front, like I said, will just rest on the front of the folded seat. The rear will overlap onto the rear platform. And near the middle, I'm just going to put a 2x4 at the exact location that is the height of a 2x4. So this means that the front is just going to be a 2x4 screwed to a piece of plywood. Easy peasy. Okay, let's make a cut list. We know the length of the legs, that's just the height distances we measured. We know the front piece has a 2x4 going all the way across, so that's the total width of 43 inches. The sides of the rear support are half of the total length of 74 inches, which makes them 37 inches long. The three crossbars are a total width of 43 inches minus the side pieces. As you probably know, 2x4s are not actually 2 inches by 4 inches, they're 1.5 by 3.5. 43 inches minus the two 1.5 inch side pieces is 40 inches. The top pieces are both 43 inches by 37 inches, except that I'm overlapping the front onto the rear. I'm going to overlap it halfway, so we'll need to shorten the rear by 3 quarters of an inch and lengthen the front by 3 quarters of an inch. So this gives us 35 and 1 quarter and 37 and 3 quarters. And now we build. Some people will tell you to measure twice and cut once, but I'm running out of time here, so I'm just going to measure once correctly. Once you have all your measurements marked down, you can start cutting all your pieces and screwing them together. I drilled two pilot holes for each of the pieces, and the screws were two and a half inches long. 
Throw the top on, screw it down, and it's time to move on to the front piece. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm gonna add hinges to the back so it's easier to store stuff underneath it. So I'll remove those screws and add some hinges. For the front piece, all we need to do is screw together one 2x4 and the plywood. Once that's done, we just install it through the door. If you, maybe if you, can you like twist it? Up? All right, we'll go through the back. As you can see, everything worked out exactly as it was supposed to, mostly. All right, so maybe we should have measured twice. No big deal though, we'll just drill new holes in the right spot and move the board back. I'm gonna secure the front of the platform to the back with some screws, and that's it. Totally, mostly flat. That's it, you're done. Take a picture, throw it on Instagram, get your stuff, throw it under the platform, and you are ready to go camping. Oh, wait a minute, we forgot something. I have a lot of questionable ideas when it comes to cars, and I like to record them, so hit that subscribe button and follow along. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, and thanks for watching.